creative. They are uh, inquisitive, questioning all everything, which is understandable, but um, when like they question who they are, what they, what their purpose is. When do they start to ask that, since they're very evolved anyways, and they're Indeed. And we also know that the pregnancy period is... Oh. Ah, the pregnancy period. We could talk about uh, in, uh, conception, birth, how long it takes. When do they start to actually begin to even think and become creative? And From conception to what is called the birthing is three months. No more. And it is painless. There is no pain. Mm -hmm. Because pain is a negative, and there is no negativity. So they're born? Indeed. Natural childbirth? Of course. Actually, in the ocean. In the Arctic Ocean? No, in the ocean in what is termed the hollow earth. Well, that's sort of a hole. It is a tropical. It made sense. It is tropical. Okay. Got it. Okay. And then, of course, now in here, people, you know, children are usually, when they're born, they drink milk. So in hollow earth, are they also uh, breastfed or given milk and fruit, or how are they? How are given they? fruit, mm -hmm. not milk. Milk. No. It's not like you knew the answer to that question. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> They're not breastfed. Yeah. No. Not breastfed. No. They are giving a um, a solution that is um, a mixture of fruits, soft. Mm. As babies. As babies, indeed. Mm -hmm. They should do the same on the surface, but they do not. So when do they really start to develop as far as where they can begin to read and write? Right away. Right away. Right away. Indeed. A child is born. Mm -hmm. And when are they going to be able to read and write? They will begin to... Uh, reading and uh, writing is not necessary. Oh, correct. correct. Because of the telepathy. Um, and they do that as soon as they're born? Yes, upon birth. And even before. How does the learning process work if, there, if there's no writing? We have what is called the Pathologos Library. Say that again a little slower for me, please. The path? Pathologos Library. Pathologos Library. It's located beneath the Aegean Sea in Hollow Earth. It is where the people go to learn. Uh, but it is a different learning. It is an experience learning, um, and actually being at the event. You can learn much more by being in an event instead of reading about it. Hmm. This is uh, this is interesting. I just read about a guy who had a had an experience where he was given a choice of what he wanted to learn and he was interested in some ancient warfare or something like this. I can't remember who it was. It was, um, he was Alexander the Great, I think. And they put him in front of the screen and they let him see it, smell it, feel it, experience it. And touch it. As though you were there. Indeed. Yeah. And that is the way it is in Pathologos Library. Say you wanted to uh, experience what would be termed as what uh, 
the sinking of the Titanic. You are there, on the ship, experiencing it. It's like a holodeck, or is this a screen? Or? Similar to it. Um, you have crystal uh, discs made of crystal, and uh, they are put upon a player, and they are played. And it is as if it becomes a reality to you. You are there. You intermingle and intertalk with the people there. Or with another star system. The yeah. birthing of a world. So it sounds amazing, I mean, that you could... Um Anything you want to learn, anywhere you wanted to go, you don't even have to go there. Hmm? You, have, you don't even have to go to this place. No, you do not. To see it. It is there in your mind, and you also experience it by being there. Learning is much greater capacity that way, and uh, you learn much faster by experiencing what you are seeing. So when a child is born in Hollow Earth, um, and I'm, again, we're, we're, uh, the, the perception is, or my um, uh, point of reference is from this world. Indeed. Is, and then you're born with certain capabilities. You know, uh, he is, uh, Walter is very inclined with very, uh, he's got great abilities with uh, working with um, electronics, uh, with lots of these technical things. Mm -hmm. um, many chil children are also born with wanting to become artists, etc. Mm -hmm. So the, ch the children that are born in Hollow Earth, are they, do they already have it in their genes as well? Which areas they're going to flourish in? Um, I don't know the, the, I guess what I want to do, is I, what I, wa I want to ask is about the, their DNA. Mm -hmm. I want to know about their genes. How is that all? How, how does that all come to be? Hmm. Okay. Their makeup. Yes. Hmm. Many of them choose before conception. Okay. And once they are born, then they have a predestined path. Isn't that also derived from you and your? Companion? Indeed, it is. So they have some of your genes, so to speak. Indeed. As well as their own. Yes. They have, okay. So similar. And they are free to express it. Mm -hmm. Contrary to what it is on the surface, on the surface, you um, raise your child, you send them to uh, institutes of learning. And what do they learn? Nothing unuseful. On this planet. Um, are they taught to care for nature? No. Are they taught to um, express themselves through creativity? No. They are, they are told not to. They are uh, told to um, be, be a certain way. We do not do this to our children. We allow them to express themselves, to allow them to be who they wish to be, or what they wish to be. Okay. Which is what they should do on the surface, but they do not. And then your peoples, what is termed as your military uh, government, uh, issue uh, things such as mandatory inoculations, uh, which also hinder the development of the child. It takes away their ability of creation. It takes away their ability to um, be uh, independent, to be free, to be expressive, to be creative, to... Um, their creative mind is hindered by drugs, chemicals. So your daughter, the youngest, right now is uh, 
for ourselves already. Of course. If she was brought to the surface, she would be considered a genius. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Indeed. Appreciate you taking the time. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Walter. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm spent. He's I'm he Walter. I'm doing. sorry, I'm down. <laughs> I've got nothing left. Oh, Sarah has such, has such wonderful... Yeah. Knowledge. I have that effect upon people. So. <laughs> uh, not you. You could stay for as long it. as you like. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyway, you know, I don't have, I, 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 you know, well, there was one, there was one other kind of theme thing in here that, um, that was, and Billy's already kind of talked about this three different ways, I think. Um, what is this? This has to do with, and we, we, we touched on it a little bit, is, you know, what does it take to get into the hall of earth, and don't answer yet. Um, <laughs> um, I want to make sure I phrase this right. When will people have more exposure to hollow earth? When will it be made available to other people? Do you have to be a believer to be a part of it? No, you do not have to be a believer. When they're ready, that's when the interaction will come take place. Is there, is there something that people have to do to become ready? Raise their consciousness levels, raise their vibrational levels, raise their energy levels. The exercise I taught you last night will it help them achieve this. And we're talking about meditation. Not just meditation. Meditation is uh, thought processes, what is termed as the uh, rising of the, of the consciousness levels, the exercise that was given. That is what will raise the vibrational levels and the consciousness and the energy. Right. So, Indeed. Right. So with the, with the hands and, the, and the exhaling through the teeth forcefully. Indeed. Okay. I had looked at that as a, uh, a preparation of course. For, for meditation. It could be that too. Okay. Got it. Now, when you go to bed, have with you what is termed either a tablet or what would be termed as a recording device. And, I when, you, of those. and when you dream, hmm, yeah. before you retire, you state forth to the Lord God of your being that you want to remember your dream. Mm -hmm. And you remember by waking right afterward and either write it down or record it. So why is it important to record your dreams? Especially nowadays because you're starting to dream of your future work, future home. That is why. That is what your dreams were about last night. I don't remember my dreams last night. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Before you retire, before you retire. Yes. Yeah. He's telling me what my dreams are. Uh -huh. what, do you, can you tell me what I dreamt last night? Because I can't tell you. <laughs> he, can, he can say anything, really, right now. In course, I could say anything, and uh, you would either, either believe it or not believe it. You dreamed of hurtling camels. And <laughs> No, you dreamed of going to Hollow Earth. Yeah. That's what you dreamed. I remember it. It will come to you. Okay. I dreamed other cool stuff, but I don't remember that. Well, if, if your desire is strong enough, you will remember your dream. Yeah. Well, I was telling Billy this morning that um, dreams are easier, e more easily remembered if right after you wake up and you focus on them. 
Indeed, you can do this. But you can also wake up in the middle of the night and record it. What you dreamed. Yeah, I've heard people having exercises where they'll, they'll set like a little timer. You know, go off like every half hour. You have what in, inside you, you have what would be termed as an internal clock. Mm -hmm. And you can set it for whatever time you wish to ar arise. Um, you can do this with um, uh, uh, waking in the morning. Uh, instead of waking up at um, 9 o'clock, you could wake up at 7 or whatever by setting your internal clock. Right, and I can do that, but since Hall Earth doesn't have time, you guys really don't need alarm clocks, do you? In, uh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> and time is an illusion yeah, yeah. as well. Do you rest? Do we rest? rest? No, do you rest? That's what, is what I said. Do we rest? Mm. Mm, singular, plural. <laughs> Indeed, um, at times we rest, yes. Uh, okay. Well, there's the collective, the collective we. Uh, mm -hmm. Billy talked about all one, and yet you have individually bodies. But we are still one. Okay, but. There's still individual bodies. No? Of course, but you are still one with a single mind. Okay. Is there a, there's a physical body? Of course. Okay. There's multiple multiple physical bodies. Mm -hmm. Mentally connected as one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the individual bodies can choose whether mm -hmm. to eat or not, whether to sleep or not. Of course. Okay. I'm asking. Zora, your individual body, do you sleep? At times, yes. Do you eat? Of course. Have you heard the term breatharian? Indeed. Is this something that you want, uh, that you are? Can be. The other choice is fruitarian. Mm -hmm. uh, no meat eaters down there? No. no. You do not eat what you talk to. <laughs> well, let's see. Can you, well, you can talk to the plant. Indeed. Well, you eat that. Okay. Indeed. But I'm speaking of what you talk with uh, through telepathy. Um, anything with a face, you leave alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do not eat fish because fish we communicate with. Mm -hmm. Hmm? So what about singing orchids? <laughs> <laughs> All our plants sing. <laughs> Do the strawberries sing? Uh, hmm? Do strawberries sing? The plants do, yeah. The fruit doesn't? The fruit is for nourishment. Okay. Are there bees in Hollow Earth? <laughs> About that big. <laughs> How large, how large are the strawberry blossoms? Strawberry blossoms? Yeah. The plant's got to have a flower. The, the bee's got to pollinate the flower. Mm -hmm. Flower becomes fruit. Big. Bigger. <laughs> big. You've got blossoms that are this big. Of course. Is there a real estate problem down there? Where people <laughs> real live? Estate and, problem. Well, think about it. You've got, you have these ginormous plants. You know, it, one strawberry, is that enough to feed a family of four, you know? Remember how tall we are. Remember how tall we are. You're, oh, okay. All right. You're 15 feet, was it? Or was it meters? I forget. Feet. Feet. Okay, 15 feet tall. So you're twice my height. More than twice my height. And still a strawberry this big is still going to be, for a person 15 feet tall. You know, scaling is still, that's a big strawberry. Indeed. Do you have strawberry seed spitting contests? We have watermelon seed contests. <laughs> you spit the watermelon seeds to no. see how far they'll go. <laughs> yeah, I know you're being facetious. Okay. <laughs> I had asked Billy um, 
to describe what the houses were like and what his room looked like. Ah. Perhaps maybe you could tell us a scenario you get up. Even his if room? Yes. Hmm. Billy's room is round, of course. It's, it's circles within a circle. You have your home, which is the circle, mm -hmm. and then you have your rooms that are circle, circular as well, mm -hmm. inside the circle. Mm -hmm. There is no um, corners for dust to settle. Mm -hmm. um, the furniture within the room, uh, you have what is termed as a, a sitting... Um, 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 device. It is round. It hovers above the floor, and you have your your uh, resting place, which is the same. Um, he preferred not to have them, but um, he would prefer to go out and lay in the grass. Mm. So he let me be with Mother Nature. Um, which we encourage him to do. Um, the collective as a whole, the people in the hollow earth, they go to and fro in their daily activities. Activities could consist of going to Pathologos Library or what is termed as uh, being uh, out with nature or singing, or playing an instrument, or what is called um, uh, going to other star systems, um, just from thought. Um, you are not limited to hollow earth, you can go wherever you desire. Um, so, yes? So there's no, uh, in terms of, you know, like, the mundane things of, uh, you know, I know that there are no corners, you know, but uh, here, you know, even if you have a bed, you still have to make the bed. You know, you still have to, um, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, and you don't need to make a bed. You don't have to make a bed. Oh. If you have a, a, a bed. Mm -hmm. a, a platform a to platform. lay upon. It is soft, uh -huh. forms around your body. Uh -huh. Nothing to make it sound like. I'm sorry? It doesn't sound like there's anything to make up. Nothing. Nothing to make up. Just Indeed. A just a platform? Just a platform. Very, no blankets. That was very Klingon to me. Yeah. Mm, I know. <laughs> very what? Klingon. Yeah. Klingon. Yeah. It's... It <laughs> that is a program on TV. Yes. Star Trek. <laughs> Indeed. The Klingons have platforms. There's no sheets, yes. no pillars. No, Everything's very hard. In the Klingon world. Well, Everything is very soft. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, and so far as not having a, a pillow or a sheet or yeah. a blanket. And everything spartan. is like covering on top. Okay, so district, how about, um, all right, so we talked about food a little bit, strawberries. All the fruit is big. You're all fruitarians. You're, you're eating fruit. So does everybody grow their own food? Where do you go? I mean, here we go to the store, we go shopping, give them money, we bring it home, we prepare the food, we eat it. How is that? different from what's going on down in the hollow earth. Hollow earth, you go out, you uh, uh, pluck a, a, a fruit from a tree, uh, you eat it, um, you have uh, what is termed as um, uh, multiple um, um, foods. Um, I've, I've been asked on what is termed, how does one defecate? Mm -hmm. um, is there toilets? Right, the sewage system. I mean, there is none. A water treatment system. None so needed. Take a whole lot back and take none needed. When you uh, have yourself what is termed as a bowel movement, it is disintegrated upon exiting the body. Disappears? Indeed. Did you know that? That's interesting. Huh? That, that is interesting. So, 3D, 3D man on surface walks into all earth being permitted and everything's squared away. Does he immediately become 15 feet tall and uh, 
It is a process. Yeah. Okay. Is this something that, that is put through by the people of Hollow Earth? If the desire is to stay in Hollow Earth, mm -hmm. then he will begin his change. Automatically? Okay. There are like no buttons to push, really. No, the, the gravity in, in within Hollow Earth Whatever you weigh now, you would subtract that down to a third, and that's what you would weigh. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, so you've had, you said you've had people come in from the service before. Indeed. So, so and there are people who have stayed. Indeed. How long is this transition for them to becoming? Some fast, some slow. Okay, here we go with time again. See, I'm setting an alarm clock. I want to know how many days is it. Measured in days. There is no time. There is no time. So it's instantaneous, really. It's now. All of now. Indeed. Okay. So no distribution system, no sewage system, no sheets to wash, um, no dust, really? No yeah. dust. Well, there's dirt down there, right? Doesn't the dirt kind of kick up? <laughs> winds blow? Are there winds down there? Gentle winds. Gentle not, winds. Not, not harsh at all. Not heavy. Not strong. So, so the bodies are different. Of course. Okay. And the epidermis, and our skin's always flaking off. That's where a lot of dust comes from. <laughs> you know, so is that different from the bodies? The bodies are pure. All over. So we don't have, there's no need for sips, no need for baths, not at all. Mm -hmm. Nope, everything is fresh, everything is clean. Okay. It is hard to conceive. Huh? Or, yeah, it is it, hard to fathom. Yes, it sounds very uh, much like a flight of fancy. Really. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, people think of it as a Garden of Eden. That's the real Garden of Eden. Yeah. Yeah. Eden is one of the cities. Uh, is hell down there? What? Is there a place called hell down there? No. Because okay. I've seen maps that put hell down there. Just curious. Ah. Uh. Man's conception. Where are the um, the negative and um, evil, um, as far as you know, higher dimensional beings? Where are they? They're not in Hollow Earth. No, I'm not talking about just Hollow mm. Earth. In, I know earth. that they are there. Inner Earth. You have. Two civilizations within the Earth crust mm -hmm. that are always disagreeing with one another. You have what is known as the Deros and the Tiros. Mm. Okay. They are degenerates of the Atlantean culture. Oh, really? Hmm. Do they look human? Somewhat. Are they greys? No. Are they reptilians? No. Deros or Tiros? Deros and Tiros. Some look somewhat human. The Deros are more uh, distinguishable toward human, as whereas the others of the uh, um, um, more of a degenerate degenerate. Degenerative uh, being. Where are they in that chair? Where do they where do they um, uh, reside? They would be close to the four hundred the, the four hundred mile mark. Hmm. And then, how do you keep them at bay? How do you keep them at bay so that they don't? Um, I don't want to say infiltrate, but... Uh, they are monitored on a, on a daily basis. They're fifth dimensional, though, still. Mm -hmm. They're fifth dimensional as well. They're actually in between fourth and fifth. Huh. Okay. Because they're, they're, they were from they the Atlantean culture. Yeah, so they don't have that. Okay. Are you, are you aware of the grays? You mean the gray space suit? I mean the grays. I say again, 
<laughs> Are you familiar with you mean the gray spacesuits? I don't know anything about any gray spacesuits. I, I only know the, uh, know of them. They are humanoid inside them. Um, they are a um, a species of themselves, but they are not um, the outward appearance you see of them is not what they truly look like. Hmm. It is a shell. Hmm. Where do they live? Hmm? Where, where, are they, where do they live on the planet? They do not. Yeah. They are just visitors. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. are, you familiar, are you familiar with the underground bases at Dulce, New Mexico. <laughs> the Agathians that are on the surface of the earth are in control of what would be termed as the um, underground bases um, up to a certain level. The upper levels from the earth's crust downward uh, are still controlled by what is termed as the um, um, beings, um, military. Below that, they are being manned by what is termed the Agathians. What do the Agathians look like? The Agathians look like you or I, um, not quite as tall as us, but similar. Are they white? Are they what? Are they black? <laughs> Are they brown? Are they yellow? Are they Indian? Red? What do, what do they look like? Okay. Whatever the shade they wish to be. Chameleons? Mm -hmm. They're chameleons, you see. If they, say, if they decide, if they they decide on whatever shade they want. Whatever they want to be. Okay. That's convenient. Indeed, it is. How would I know if I ever met a, a, a Garthian? A Garthian? Yeah. If your vibration is high enough, you will see them. If they look like anybody else, how will I be able to tell them apart from a regular human? The Garthians are quite uh, tall as well, but not as tall as us. I don't know, there's a lot of NBA players who are pretty tall. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. <laughs> junior high school kid, seven and a half feet tall. Oh my God! He's still going. Look at these Algarvians. Indeed. <laughs> so you have learned. Yeah, I'm, I've uh, I've been fed with fire hose and I'm on overload <laughs> right now. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, that's been good. We're taping this, so I can watch it back and see what I missed. Indeed. On that, I will leave and let Billy return. Okay. I'm sure you will have questions for him. Yeah. Thanks for stopping. And um, indeed. Coming again soon. <laughs> Good day, Zora. <laughs>